Lord, we glorify your name today, God, and we declare, Father, there is none like unto you. There is none in heaven, on earth, under the earth that can be compared unto you. This morning, oh God, we reverence the triune God. We magnify the name of the great God of heaven, the God of all gods, the God who sits upon the throne. Hallelujah. We give glory unto the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. Father in God, be magnified in this place today, God. Be magnified in our service, Lord God. We present it before you, God. A celebration of thanksgiving today, God, for a life that has been well lived, God. We say thank you, Father. Father, thank you today for every family member present. Thank you for family, for friends, and for loved ones. Thank you for ministers today. Thank you for members. Oh God, but most of all, we thank you for your blessed presence here with us, God. Father God, and as we have gathered, I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that there would be an anointing in this house, God. An anointing that would destroy yokes. An anointing that would set captives free. An anointing, oh God, that would lift burdens. God, because you are our burden bearer. So mighty God in this house today, be magnified as we lift our hands and sing to you today, God. Let every song that is chosen, God, bring glory and honor and praise to your holy name. God, we declare there is none like unto you. God, today some may come. Lord God, their hearts may be heavy. They may be burdened. Some may be here, God, not feeling well in body. God, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever the condition present in your house, Lord God, you are a very present help in trouble. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. God, whatever we need today in your house, God, minister God to us as a collective body and minister as individuals, God. Every individual need. Your word reminds us that man looks on the outward appearance. God, that is all we can see. But you look on the heart, God. Hallelujah, Father. So even now, mighty God, look within the heart of each and every one of us today, God, as we present ourselves before you, Lord God. Hallelujah. As we lift our hands today in worship and in praise, God. Let yokes be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Cause dark clouds to be dispelled today, God. Every plot of the adversary, God, we render it null and void by the blood of Jesus Christ today. Hallelujah. Lord God, and I speak the name of Jesus Christ over every member of this congregation today. Whatever may prevail in the house, Lord God. Father, have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way in circumstances, Lord. Have your way, God, in situations. In every home represented today, every, have your way, God. In every workplace today, God, have your way, God. Be magnified. Lord God, cause your people to be strengthened as we hear your word. Lord God Almighty, I lift your ministering servant before you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that the word, Lord God, that you have given for the house today, God, be a now word, an on-time word, a word, oh God, that will do, God, what only you can do. Lord, and as we claim today, Isaiah 55, your word said it will not return void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. So God, today in the name of Jesus Christ, as your word is ministered, Lord God, touch hearts, Lord God, touch lives, touch circumstances, move as only you can, God. Hallelujah. Lord God, and may your people benefit today from being in the house of the Lord God today. So Father, today we ascribe glory and honor and majesty and dominion and might and power unto him and him alone who sit on the throne and unto the lamb father god receive our highest praise god receive our highest praise god without reservation god 
Receive our highest praise today, Father. Hallelujah. We send our hallelujahs up to you, God. Our oh, thank you, Jesus, God. For we declare in the house the Lord our God is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. So, Father in God, today we declare we are the clay. You are the potter. You are the eternal, almighty, immutable, invisible God. So be magnified in this house that robot today, God, as we surrender everything to you, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Good morning. This morning's Bible reading is taken from Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 12, then 25 to 31. Reading. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doeth surely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Verse 25 to 31. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and, her, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praised her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Give her of the fruits of her hands, and let her own words praise her in the gate. This Amen. is the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Let's give God thanks for the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated, and Sister Janelle Walker will come and welcome you. A blessed good morning to all of you, and it's nice to see you here this morning. But let us first give honor to the triune God this morning. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Blessed Holy Ghost. Let us stand this morning and raise our hallelujahs to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords this morning. For he alone, he alone this morning is worthy. He alone is worthy. The Psalmist Davis asks a question, what shall I render? What shall I render unto God for all his benefits? What shall I render? And we will render our hallelujahs this morning. Our praises are not thank you, Jesus. We have made it all through the year 2023, and we are here in 2024. I can see you, you can see me. What shall I render this morning for all his benefits towards me? Bless the name of the Lord. You may take your seat this morning, and I welcome you again to the New Testament Church of God, Roebuck. And those who will be viewing as well, I welcome you. I want to first introduce you to our ministering, our leader this morning. This is our Reverend Gittins and his family. May you please stand so others may see you. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Our other leaders that we have present supporting Reverend Gittins, our Minister Sobers, our assistant, and in her absent minister, Rhonda. We have some visitors here as well this morning, and I first want to highlight two females of Robot Soil. 
This is our pastor, Dorcas Scanterbury. May you stand, please? As well as Reverend Leela Springer. May you stand, ma'am? And these are from Roba. They are from our soil here this morning. Now, there are also many other visitors here on my right, your left. And I am sure they have come to support our Mahal. Mahal, this is John. How are you doing? <laughs> yes. Nice to see you. We will talk later. We will speak later. So those in support and who ha would have come to wealth, sorry, to support Mahal this morning, her family and her friends, may you stand. We have a crowd this morning. We bless you in the name of our Lord and thank you for coming. We welcome you this morning. We welcome you this morning. You may take your seat. Thank you so very much. And our honored guest, on our honored guest, and this is what I want us to do. We are going to honor her this morning and we are going to stand. She's not going to stand, we are going to stand. And we are going to say thank you, Lord. That is all we are going to say. We thank God this morning for preserving her life for a hundred years. So let us give a rousing round of applause this morning while we say thank you, Lord, this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. She is indeed honored this morning, and she has made it thus far by faith, by grace, with prayer. We thank you, Lord, this morning. We thank our Lord this morning. Thank you. You may see, sit again. And I also want to extend greetings to all of the department heads, the ladies, life builders, and the youth as well. And I'm seeing some children here this morning, and I'm glad to see you. So I welcome you in the name of Jesus. I also want to extend greetings to the platform party made up of our worship team. And I know we have come to worship. That is our main goal. We have come to worship our God. So as we worship our God, let us concentrate on the King of Kings. Remember what shall you render this morning? So you raise your hallelujahs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May God bless you. Abroad, no, we are celebrating a special occasion, huh? And they want you to celebrate as if you are celebrating. Amen. Amen. Give God the thanks, give God the praise and the glory. We have our first hundred year old at Robux today. Yeah. Remember, I said first. After first comes, <laughs> second. There gotta be a second somewhere along the line. So I am saying first today, huh? You have a first born over seven children, right? And it says, so if we are celebrating. Our first, it is the first for Robot Church, the first for Robot, and the first in our family. Yeah. So you have to celebrate triple. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. And I don't want you to get too comfortable in your seat, whether you come to this church or not, whether you're a member or not. Get up and throw your feet and make sure your feet ain't hurting. <laughs> make sure you have strength in your feet. Yeah. Right? I give honor to our pastor Gittins this morning. Thank you. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. I greet his family, Lady Laura, his son, and any other person that feel you a family to the pastor. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you feel close to people, right? Like many people call my whole man. Why? Beca because they feel as though she's their man. Right? Ma, it's good to see you. And you're looking spavacious this morning. <laughs> Wonderful. You are Lady Sylvia Hall today. Ain't she look like a young lady? Oh, glory to God. I thank God for how he has preserved your life. You never know. I might be second. God bless you. Here comes the worship team. Here comes the worship team. I 
I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9 says, Know therefore that of thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails. Joy for 
forever. Oh, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of Savior Jesus Christ. This morning we have gathered in his name. For we understand and recognize that he is our blesser. And as I want to paint it, all of my blessing, it comes from the Lord. So we have gathered this morning in his name to honor our dear sister Hall as she celebrates her 100th birthday. I declare to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the praise. The God who is faithful. The God who is just. The God who is righteous. Hallelujah. And the God who is able to keep her even down in her old age. We come not to, to a funeral to celebrate her death, but we come to celebrate her life. And we are saying, God, we thank you, God, 
yet again for your grace and your mercy that brought her to you. If it had not been for God on her side, she will not be here. So it's through the sunshine and the wind, she has made it. Hallelujah. And she can declare God, hitherto the Lord has been her helper. And God has been her strong tower. And she can join the Psalm 100 and 106. Or give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy, his grace, his long suffering, his patience endure forever. So to God be the glory. And her God is our God. Hallelujah. And the God that keep her is keeping us. And because we know him as a creator, we know him as the servant God, but we know him as our redeemer. Amen. And we join Jeremy saying, know that my redeemer live. My sister redeemer live. Amen. Hallelujah. So as we come to celebrate, we give God thanks and praise for our life. I want to acknowledge her family, her friends, her loved one, who have gathered here this morning, of Reverend Dorcas and another minister, and all the ministers in the house and workers, we come into this great place. Understanding our God is great. Amen. And say, God, you are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. And all I can do, God, is say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for her friends. We take it not for granted. Thank her, God. Thank you, God, for her family. We take it not, we take them not for granted. Her friends, not for granted. Her church, not for granted. So, God, we give you thanks. For all of our help comes from you, Lord. And you who have begun a good work in my dear sister life will complete that work. In Jesus' name. Amen. It tells me that she has labored long in the vineyard. Yes. And the Apostle Paul said, He has fought a good fight. Yes. He has finished his course. Yes. And he looked forward for a crown of glory. Yes. And bless God, she has labored for the Lord. Yes. She went through much sacrifice. Yes. But the God that she served is faithful. Yes. Who one day will reward her. For all her toil, her labor of love in his vineyard. So since your labor, your work, your prayer is not in vain. God will reward you. So I'm part of, I'm blessed with part of this great celebration. And give God thanks and praise for you. Hallelujah. At the same, let's all stand as we want to believe God. That her work here on earth is not yet come to a close. Her life, the testimony. And we give God thanks for it. Father, we give you thanks and praise that we, this morning we can celebrate the life of our dear sister Hall. God, you have allowed her, God, to see this day that you have made. And God, we come to celebrate on her behalf and be glad and God, we pray for your continued goodness, your continued mercy, your continued blessing, your continued healing, your continued God provision. Mighty God, we pray, God, that you will cover her, God, with your arm of love. May you fill her hearts this morning with love that out of it shall flow gratitude and thanksgiving unto you and praise unto you in Jesus' name. I pray, God, you will continue, God, to keep our hearts stay upon you. I pray for our mind, God, will stay upon you, God. I pray, God, that the blood of Christ, God, will continue, God, to wash her, God, and seal her, God, the Holy Spirit of promise right now that she can say, truly, I am a child of God Almighty. So, God, I pray, God, but whatever inward struggle that she may be experiencing of discomfort, 
I pray, God, that your healing virtue will flow from the top of our head, God, to the soles of our feet. In Jesus' name, God, let our God be renewed and be fresh in your glory. Be new, God, and be fresh in your anointing, in your presence right now. Let her, God, experience the joy and your shakana kind of glory right now. Surround her in Jesus' name right now, God. God, let her feel your anointing fresh. A fresh glory upon her. A fresh smile from your face, God. Oh, God, a gentle touch from your hand. Mighty God, let her feel, oh God, that, that she belongs to you, God. And that she belongs to, to you right now. And you all, and she been loved and taken care of by you. In Jesus' name, I pray for laying down. God will be sweet. In Jesus' name, nothing shall disturb her sleep. But I pray, God, you bless her with rest. And she will sleep sweet in the Lord. And you'll release your angel, God, to be encamped around her life. In Jesus' name, mighty God. Keep her right now in the hollow of your hand, God. For no one can pluck her, God, out of your hand. Be prayed, God, that your sovereign will for her, God, will prevail, God. And a lot of days, God, that you allowed her, God, on this side of life, that you will cause her, God, to see all of those days according to your wishes in glory in Christ Jesus right now. Father, into your hand, Lord, we commit her life that you will keep her, God, and you preserve her going out, and you preserve her coming in, and you're going to bless her family, God, and you're going to bless the seed of friend God in our church in Jesus name so we declare your blessing right now to overtake her this morning and may she be a blessing and Lord your glory God be shine to her countenance that all they can say truly is the hand of God that's keeping her so preserve her right now for all sickness disease infirmity and an attack an enemy and the cup of your blood, it's just my prayer. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise God, praise God. May we see it. God is good. And may God continue to bless us as we celebrate our life. To God be the glory. To God be the praise. Great things he have done and we do because he's a great God and we love him in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank God for our Reverend Guinea. I'm seeing something right across this congregation that I love this morning. Look, look, I'm seeing some smiles in this house. Amen. Oh, and I believe they're looking up at Bonita and smiling. Because she has a contagious smile, you know. Oh, glory to God. At this time, it is time for the word of God. And the preacher needs no introduction to us. He's one of us. Our pastor. Dorcas Canterbury. Hallelujah. Would you stand and receive her in the name of Jesus? Yes. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus the name that is above all names. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confesses that he is Lord to the glory of God. You may be seated. I am so honored to be here this morning in this service. Thank you. I am so blessed to be home. I'm like Mull of Kintyre, who wandered far. But home is always home. I am here, joining with you to praise God for the life and times of our sister Halls and Sister Watson. Whenever I call it wrong, she puts on the S. Yes, yes. My brother that passed, with his root self would always say, self eight. But I've never done that. It's always been Mrs. Morris and now Miss Hall. She's a mother to us, undoubtedly. 
And I pray that as God speaks to us from his word this morning, some picture, some would be shown of God's great grace and mercy to us. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you for allowing me your pulpit. I bring greetings from my home pastor at Christ is the Answer Family Church, Reverend Bullen, who called and blessed me yesterday evening. He must have thought the occasion was momentous, you know, because he really prayed for this service today. Glad to be home. Glad to see us all. You know, I was saying, I said, Look, I hope I don't make a fool of myself and cry this morning. <laughs> but even if I cry, I'm at home. Yeah. Let us turn to the word of God. And we are going to be reading and seeing all my cousins all over the place. <laughs> well, lost. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Psalm 117. The entire psalm comprises only two verses. And it reads thus. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Holy Father, we reverence you this morning. You have been invited and you have come. And you are already here. I plead the blood of Jesus upon this congregation and myself. And all those who might be listening to the stream. Lord, I pray that you would encapsulate us in this space for this time. I pray, oh God, that this would be a safe zone against every power of hell and darkness. Every disturbing attack we bind it by the blood of Jesus. That your word might have free course in this house. Hallelujah, for your word is life. And the words you speak unto us, they are spirit. And they are life. We hide behind the cross. We come under the shadow of the Almighty this morning. Because this is serious business in the heavenlies. Proclaim yourself today. And let yourself be known. And may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. Praise ye the Lord. This morning, based on the theme that have been set out, we are giving great praise for great mercies. And this morning as we look at this theme, great praise for great mercies, as expressed in this Psalm 117, we want to identify the great in which we are looking at this, in the context of this occasion, of the hundred years of Sister Hawes on this earth. We have, must have a common understanding before we proceed of what this word great means. Great for us today means in relation to God's mercy and loving kindness, that they're not only strong, but exceedingly strong. It means mighty with the power to overcome as in warfare. It means powerful to defend and protect. The Psalm says that God's loving kindness is great. The heart of this discourse this morning is that God has shown to Sister Hall great loving kindness by allowing her to reach this great age. Oh, yeah. I up here start preaching my sermon, but I don't mind. Enough. I'm going to say what God said and that what you're confirming. And all that he is asking of us to do this morning is return to him great praise. That's all he wants us to do. Return to a great God great praise for his great loving kindness hallelujah glory to god psalm 117 is numbered among the hallelujah psalms each of these psalms begin or ends with the words hallelujah praise the lord 
it is a strong command to praise the Lord. And it's very applicable to us today. For the Lord has done great things for us. We are off. We are glad. This great that we are talking about is beyond big or large. It is brilliant. It's exceptional. It is amazing. It is marvelous. It is glorious. It is great. Whatever superlative that you can find in your vocabulary, you can apply it. Why? In praise of the Lord God Almighty. The psalm only comprises these two verses. But I believe that it is packed with all that is required for this occasion. That is why we have come together here from far and near, USA and UK, from the merry parishes of this island, Roebuck, Indian ground, all the surrounding villages. We have gathered here with one intent. We are here to specifically praise the Lord for his great loving kindness toward our beloved Sister Hall and allowing her to be even in our presence here sitting down today. We could go on home now because this is blessing beyond what we could ever imagine. Some of us never thought that we would have been here. But God is good. His mercy is everlasting. And in truth and joy to all generations. Praise ye the Lord. We are praising the Lord. The Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, our sovereign Lord, who has all power and authority. He is supreme master and ruler of everything. The name Lord refers to God's person and character. Through his word, the Bible, he has revealed himself to us as being faithful, true, and holy. He's also merciful, kind, and caring. Psalm 103, 11 says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Verse 17, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. We are represented here in our generations and tribes and families and this congregation because we acknowledge the mighty God who he is. In all of our rejoicing and the high expectation and excitement leading up to the 11th and even now, I was talking to one of my, you know, the, one of the organizers, and her voice was like a champagne voice. It was frizzing and popping. And I said, this is real excitement. Oh, this village went into prayer and praise for Sister Hall long before we are here this morning. We are here to give God his due because it is not by might and it is not by power but it's by the Holy Spirit of the living God. And you know that verse talk about children's children. And there is an inheritance in it. What she got and what our forefathers got have been passed to us. And you know, anyway, don't let me get ahead of myself. We are the generations that inherited through their faithfulness the good grace of God. Can you say amen? Amen. We praise the Lord because he is the covenant maker. He not only makes covenant with us, he is the covenant fulfiller. What he promises, he fulfills. What he ordains comes to pass, he sustains it. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can hinder it. Nothing can block it. If God says it's ours, it is ours by the grace of God. And we say, oh Lord God of Israel, There is no God like thee in the heaven. There is no God like thee in the earth. You keep covenant and you show mercy unto all of us that walk before him with all of our hearts. As long as we're in covenant with him, he is our rock, the rock in which we hide. He's our shelter in the time of storm. He's our refuge. He hides us in the secret place of the most high. 
Hallelujah. In times of trouble, he is our high tower. Yes, we can run into him and we are safe. A fortress and a hiding place. Nahum says, 1-7, the Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust him. He is our shepherd. Therefore, we lack nothing. We might see a lot, but God sees no lack. In these economic times, God look at his kingdom people and say, I've provided for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So we don't have to care if the chicken got a $50 for the little peeny one. God will make it supply our very needs. He promised us. Hallelujah. He's a good shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He leads us beside still waters. Hallelujah. And great pastors. He restores our soul. He leads a holy, holy, holy. He leads us in the path of righteousness. Even for his sake. Hallelujah. All of this is in the covenant that we have with him. But as children of this kingdom, Psalm 47, 8 says, Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Our praises this morning are not mindless praises. They are not brought about by artificial intelligence that have no heart. It is not because of brainwashing. Somebody wind us up and tell me praise. We are giving praise with understanding. We are giving praise because we see what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed our body. He saved our soul. Hallelujah. We are giving thanks with understanding. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are confessing that the heavens might hear. That the earth might rejoice. And every ploy of the enemy against us will stand back. Because this is time to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you the Lord, the Almighty. The King of creation. Oh, praise him, my soul. For he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear. Now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. I must make the point. We praise him because he's our redeemer. I must say this. As instructed, as redeemer, he rescues us from a state of being in bondage to sin. Buying us from the slave market of sin and setting us free. The generations before us, they put them in the fields. And they labored. And you know they couldn't tie down the spirits. They sang the songs of Zion. And when they come out, they had a bath and they were like any prince or princess. And they come in this place and they jump high. Hallelujah. They were free, free, free. For who the sun makes free is free indeed. You know they're making a big thing. A sticking to the notes about this freedom. That we are mentally bound, you know, and they're telling us, deliver yourself about mental slavery. But I never see no mental slavery in any one of these saints that God bought with his blood. I saw freedom and liberty and strength in spite of the hard work. Hallelujah. Jesus came and he shed his blood and he died. And we accepted his redemption. And there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We celebrate our redemption this morning. Hallelujah. All of this would have no meaning at all if we were not on redemption ground. Hallelujah. We are not an unhappy people. We are not tied down and bound. We would be an unhappy people if we didn't have hope in any other thing but in this world. We would be most miserable. But as the redeemed of the Lord, we can rejoice in hope. For hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. We celebrate 
we celebrate Miss Hall's 100 years, the era she came from, the tenacity they displayed, how we celebrate her life is a testimony of the covenant relationship with God. The tributes are being made and she's recounting her story little by little. And we are honored to join her. So we have defined who we are worshiping. And now let us look at we. Who should praise the Lord? We. We should praise the Lord for his great love and kindness. We are going to look at that, the we, his great loving kindness, and his enduring loving kindness. And I promise you I won't be long, but I must make these three points. We, we praise the Lord in here. The first verse of our text calls on all nations and all people to praise the Lord. We here are the all people. If you are here with us, you are included with this, a duty of praise. God's favor has rested upon us in a mighty way that we should even see this day. I bet a lot of we didn't feel that we would come through the pandemic. Sure enough, like the way they were talking about, are we dead? But the mercy of God is good. I confess. I had one morning, I was there praising, I was confessing, I shall live and not die and all that. And the Holy Spirit said, trust me, trust me. It looked black sometimes, but here we are today in Jesus' name. Why us? Why us? Why us? It's not because we were extra good or special or particularly beautiful. They got some beautiful ones among us. That's the truth, and some handsome ones too. But it wasn't for that. It wasn't because we were brilliant intellectually that God chose us to be here this morning. Hear what he says in Deuteronomy 7, 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. If I won't pay us no money. You know, but the Lord, because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeem you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keep of covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. As long as we will last, his covenant of peace is with us. Are you believing this this morning? I want you to impress it on your heart. We will not be forsaken. We will not go under any other bondage because some old people, I can call you old because you've got a great age, Sister Hall. They went down on their knees in the fields of these plantations. They labored and they worked and they said, bless them children, Lord. One pastor used to stand up here and say, keep the, the girls from the bears and the lions. Oh, hallelujah, you're going to go off track. Hallelujah, we get prayer, strong prayer. And the Lord will keep covering up with us. Praise his name. There's a foundation laid. A foundation of honoring God. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. To all those that believe. Holy God is holy. And we believe. Let us consider our origins for a minute. In Isaiah 5.1. Israel was told to look upon the rock. From which they were hewn. And to the hole of the pit. From whence you are dead. It sounds rugged, but it's true. God was telling Israel, look at Sarah and Abraham. God is telling us this morning to consider our origins. If we understand where we came from, and we look and see where we are today, and where we are going, we have expectations of good things to come. 
origins clarify direction and purpose and even destiny. If you know where you come from, there are many things that you can withstand because you saw people go through it. Tell you this one, I had the best drive in the world. But if there's a little crease, you know, a little space for the uninitiated. And I'm waiting to go through. And I see you wriggling and going too. I wriggling and going through too. <laughs> if you can get through there, I can get through there. That's what they did for us, you know. They show us how to get through. They show us how to get past in the bad traffic. And the terrible, if you can do it by the grace of God, we can do it too. For the most part, we were nurtured in and from this tiny village. Not a big lot of houses or nothing. But God established a place of worship. And the descendants of those who labored in Sejpon and Four Hill, I ain't going back to go back. I going back to go forward. Hallelujah. In this village, we were taught the fear of God. Everybody could stop us on the street and ask, why is the golden text? Why is the memory birth? What did preacher preach from? You know that? We grew up seeing the scriptures with the preachers. So when you figure that we get a book and learn them, it was because the preacher stood up and spoke the word of God and we repeated it after them. There was the fear of God and the love of God because we ain't known about the love of God when we were little. But as we grew up, we understood that God loved us so much. Hallelujah. The Lord took us to the ends of the earth, far, 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 and he brought us back. Some of us remain here and the Lord prospered us. I'm telling you, we experienced God. I want you to look down the line, the road we call the line. At one end, Dr. Gabby. In the middle, Dr. C. And right up the line at the top, Dr. Ambrose. In this little penny village, this small space. That is what God bless us with. A few preachers and pastors and things. You understand, man? To serve him and be a witness to him in this place. I wonder if you know where I'm coming from. Even if you exercise the bit, your importance in the biggest place of this land, if our children become prime minister, good ones, I am saying to you, don't forget the rock from where you were hewn and the pit from where you were dug. I'm telling you, I don't care what you become, how you, not how, what, let me say what, but you all get it by fair means. The Lord will, I'm saying to us this morning, the Lord bless us with carpenters and mechanics and laborers. Yeah. Laborers that taught others the work. We have, you know in those days, planting canes was a science. The reason the crops don't, I can't go down these roads. The reason the crops went here, no, nobody know how to plant them. They know how to plant yams and things. But we had some people could show them. Yeah. And they feared God. And God said, you see these people in this little penny village? I got to bless them. Yeah. So when you step out of here. And you go and you see the Lord blessing you. It was no good thing that we have done. Yeah. We remember the pit from where we were dug. Yeah. And the rock that we were hewn from. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. This is a strange village. We are joined together. And I named these families because I was led to. The families of Hatton and Sylvie in their line and in their generations. Fred Mears and Iola's line in their generations. They are Rita and Uncle Fonza in their lines and in their generations. All who are joined to this clan by marriage and friendship. And by being inhabitants of this place, the Worrells, Evelyn Worrell and Josiah Blackett, Sonny and Lillian Watson. Stand up. <laughs> Iris and Farley Marshall. All of the Scantaburys and the Worrells and the Ramses. 
Rita and Joseph sobers in their tribes. The corpses and copper batches in their tribes. Woo! Hallelujah! Representing a rich heritage today in praises to God. Sister Hall, I am miss nobody. Because all of we interconnect, intertwine, and we are one. All of us look, observe, and ponder this. Even this act of celebration today is proof of God having mercy on us. If we would sit a day and talk about where we come from and where God brought us out of, it would take many days. We here must praise God. You might say, why them? You might wonder, why them? But understand God's sovereign favor is given at his will. Did he not say, Jacob, have I loved? Did. So we have been favored and blessed to be here. Consider what Sister Hall has gone through to cause this event to come to pass. She being the modest lady that she is, is very humbled by this, I know. She herself will tell you of the faithfulness of God. And we join her in the words of Lamentations chapter 3. My soul have them still from 20 to 26, Lamentations 3. In remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seek of him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of God. The Lord being her portion, she could endure and be sustained through life's journey. Sister Hall never made any assumptions about becoming a hundred, you know. She said she asked God. She asked God. She was not presumptuous. She didn't take anything as her right, as her privilege. She said, I ask God to allow me to see the day. God hears humble prayers like that, you know. But you know, Sister Hall got a lot to teach us. I remember her testifying that she had asked the Lord for a white man. <laughs> white husband. <laughs> To take care of her in her old age. And God grant her the hundred. And God grant her the good white man, Bert. I think we can learn something from his heart, you know. A lot of us could have received if we had asked. But you didn't get because you didn't ask. <laughs> oh, my Lord, my Lord, we just say. It is true. Look at us quietly asking the Lord, I want this, Lord. I am presuming nothing. I humbly asking you. Hallelujah. I pray that all of us here with a heart stirred and filled with gratitude will join her in the family. And again with the words, the Lord has done great things for me. Whereof we are glad. I ain't done yet. All those who observe Mrs. Hall and this family today, you see the blessings and the favor. But with these came great testings, great sorrows. We testify today that these testings and tears came also with great comfort and consolation. In these times, I say to us, the Lord is still saying to us from his word, Isaiah 43, but now saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the hot, hot fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame pendle upon thee. There is nothing that can come upon us or will come to us that the Lord will not take us through. The Lord is writing a narrative of our lives. And sometimes we think that the footnote is a story. 
the notes in the footnote, they always clarify what is in the text. Don't you ever think that the footnotes is the whole story. They're just to enlighten the reader. There's something to this that you need to know more. The Lord will take us through by his grace. And I speak to a family and to a village that are on grief, in grief on many sides. But this is what the Lord says to us to comfort us. From 2 Corinthians 4, 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. This is the word of the Lord for us. Don't take your footnote for the narrative. God has redeemed it. Draw comfort from this today. Living under the favor of God, there's great mercy. Today I speak the shalom. I speak peace Amen. to everyone here. Grace of God in every situation. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Nothing lost. Nothing that is not redeemable. Why how would this be redeemable? This is so hard. But God says there's redemption in me. If you trust me, whatever you go through, you will come through in Jesus' name. The peace he gave does not leave us. He said, great peace have they that love thy law. Nothing shall offend them. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I'm going to go quickly into great loving kindness. Very briefly. The scriptures speak of God's loving kindness. In the original, it is Hesed. God's loving kindness. It's expressed in Isaiah 54, 10. And it says this about great mercy. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah shall not more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I will not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart. And the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that have mercy on thee. That is the word of the Lord to us. He kept his promise to know and the world was never drowned again. He says, my covenant with you is a covenant of peace. I am the Lord that have mercy on you. I am the Lord that is overshadowing you and undergirding you. I am the Lord, your keeper. Nothing can change it. Nothing can come against it. Psalm 63, 3 says, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. You may ask, what does it mean that his loving kindness is better than life? What can be better than life? How can anything else be better than life? The truth is, life is short. A man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward, says the patriot Job. Don't care how long it lasts, it will come to an end. It fades like the grass which is here one season and gone the next. Yet God's loving kindness endures forever. This is a promise of eternity. We don't have to fear anything. He is our hope and salvation to the end and beyond. We need to hear these words because sometimes we start to fret. What's going to happen to me? What's going to go on in my life? But God is saying to us this morning, his loving kindness is better than life. Yes. Hallelujah. His favorite is also life. Although in a way we said, I'm not contradicting myself. Abundant life is God's favor. It brings special blessing. It brings a blessing of endurance. Psalm 35 says, In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, 
but joy comes in the morning. We have expectations of joy in the morning. We have expectation that the dark night will pass. So many people are broken in the darkness of the night. They don't expect to see their light and they crumble and they fail. But God tells us your joy will come in the morning. Come on, wake up brethren and sisters. Our joy is a certain thing. I don't care how dark the night is for a child of God. Come on, we can press through. Three o'clock come, four will come. The dawning of the day will come. Don't take the midnight hour for everything. Hallelujah. God says joy will come in the morning. Hallelujah. We will embrace the morning. And you know, we got to learn to embrace joy. We just feel that, you know, we shouldn't be joyful. If we feel a little joy, we have to get frightened. We just feel, look, this ain't for me. But God wants you to know when he gives you a joy time, jump and shout and enjoy yourself because the dark times come so often. This is a time of joy. This is a time of thanksgiving and a time of praise for our joy has come over Sister Hall. Our joy, I don't care what happens next. The God of heaven has given us to us. They say that age is just a number. They say it's just a number. Well, the number sometimes is how many pains you get up with. <laughs> the number sometimes, you know, the doctor would say, used to say, come back in three months. You know, he said, come back in a month. That's a number. The number is said, how many times we forget? And we go back and we come again. And on the way up, we remember what we were going for. That's a number. We forget so much. But God still quickens our hearts to serve him. Yes, age is a number. The great number of hundred. Some of us coming up. But as you come up, don't think you can skip and jump like you want. Sometimes we just dance with the hand. You know? Because he put him moving as we want them. But we dance anyhow. Hallelujah. Numbers, numbers and age. But I want us to say, many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done. My thoughts to you are upward. They cannot be reckoned. Your thoughts to us are many. God says to us, I have many thoughts about you. If you are numbering them, they're more than the sand. When I wake up, I'm still with you. When I go to sleep and I get up, whatever I get up from, I am still with you. His mercies are numberless. With numberless blessings, each moment he crowns and filled with his goodness divine. Oh, I shout in my rapture. Oh, glory to God for such a redeemer as mine. Today we are experiencing dwelling in God's mercy. And I say to us, you know, Jeremiah was talking about loving kindness. And this is a warning for us. In Jeremiah 9, 23 and 20, he said, The Lord said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. Solomon was the richest and wisest, but he didn't go follow through to the end. Samson was the strongest, but the Lord had to bring him to a place that he had to give his life to fulfill his purpose. Don't glory because you're strong. Don't glory because you're intelligent and rich. Don't do it. God says glory in the fact that you know me. And you know that I am exercising loving kindness in the earth. We can call upon his mercy. You could be as handsome as Absalom. You could be as beautiful as the daughters of Job. Without the favor and the mercy of God upon you, you can go that far and no further. But the mercy of God will through you, see you through to your destiny. I'm coming down to let you know that the love of the Lord will endure. It will endure. 
This is not a, a, a love affair. No one, no, nothing. Zephaniah 317. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. That means he got you. He want you. He going to hold you. He will joy over you with singing. It might sound a bit fanciful, but the Lord is seeing a love song over us. Can you imagine the great Jehovah God sings a love song over us? He has rested in himself. He said, I want to change his mind. You know, people used to tell us growing up, if you do this, if you do that, you're going to go hell. God, you know, we, we were ruled with rods of iron, I tell you. We had to behave yourself. I know, I know when the rebuke come. Oh, Lord, you're trembling your shoes. Monday night was testimony. I get rebuke, Pastor. I get rebuke. <laughs> you? Oh, Lord, I never thought that way. <laughs> and my father was to preach after. And he come up at the place with tight, 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 could get through. And he said, loose me, loose me. God, the atmosphere has tightened up, dark. Cause get rebuilt, what does she do? You know? <laughs> I got my share. I am a participant in what God did in this place. But God is saying, God is not going to abandon us. If he ain't abandon me, he ain't abandon nobody else in here. We are not hopeless and hapless and helpless. Why say, oh, Jacob, my way is hid from the Lord? Why are you saying that God don't know what you're going through? Why are you saying this? He knows what you're going through. Amen. The creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not. Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength because his love is everlasting. He follows us down. He follows us down to the darkest place. He said he would draw us with cards of love. My brethren, this morning, don't be fooled with the enemy and find our seven places I can't get out of here. Don't say it. Don't do it. The Lord loves us. In conclusion, as we experience in our hearts this Thanksgiving for the great age of Sister Hall, she has her testimony and many tributes will be paid. I pray that at this service of thanksgiving as we give thanks to our great God for his great loving kindness and his enduring love that we his people understand what he's saying to us. You may be asking what next? What next for Sister Hall? What next for any one of us sitting here or listening? God alone knows the future. And he says to us from Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children's children that we may do all the words of this law. God says to us, stop speculating, stop wondering, I know the lady president come and say, not for we gone dead for Miss Hall. But that's not the word I have this morning. It might be true. God speaks his word from many sources. But God says to us, the secret things are his. They belong to him. And what is our covenant relationship is to trust him. For all things will work together for our good. Because we love him and we are called according to his purpose. Are you hearing me well? We commit or keep the keeping of our souls to him that doeth well unto a faithful creator. He's not going to leave us up or out. So what shall I render unto the Lord? For all of his benefits toward me. We will take the cup of salvation. Listen. He expects us to love each other and be reunited. If we have nothing else, we have each other. I want to say this again. We have to love each other. No, we can be a cantankerous lot. I can say it. But God says this is a new dawn. 
This is a new day. This is the beginning of new things. This is a new era. Friends and loved ones, when something rankles in your heart, say, I gave it to God. And let us love each other. We need each other. When we are in our distresses, we need to hear a voice that we say, you can hold on to God. When we are sick, when we need a healing touch, we need to know somebody cares for me. Jesus cares, but he gave us each other. You understand this? When I look at some of y'all, I see the Aunt Rita. When I look at some of y'all, I see, you know, Uncle Fred. When I look at us, I, I, I see all kind of features that can only come from this clan. And I say to us this morning, love each other. The past is the past. We learn from it. Don't hold on to it to the point that it will show our blessing. The Lord speaks to us in this house. Hear me, hear me. Everything that would hinder our unity, anything that would cause us disturbance in our spirits, leave it. He expects that we will get saved. He expects that we will accept the redemption that comes through his blood. Let us submit ourselves to him. We're not bigger than God. Let him do his will in our lives. You know, Sister Hall is the prime example of trusting in God. You know, when the batsman go to the wicket and he is intent on a hundred, he don't flash out and bat. Sometimes the wicket ain't good and he's pad and bat together, forward defensive, till the spiteful ball are gone. Yes. And we take a one run. I take a one run, but he will outlast some partners at that crease, you know. Many will go back to the pavilion and leave him there batting, but he can bat and pad in the hard times. And when he's ready, we hit a four and surprise everybody. And a six and surprise everybody else. God has allowed you to hit that four, and you hit it with grace and bring it to a hundred. Hallelujah be to Jesus. But when it was time to back careful, you're back careful. Oh, hallelujah this morning. You think you just reach a hundred just so? Snatching at everything that come? Poking the bat at everything? You behave as a craftsman, hallelujah. And we praise God for the skill you show us. Oh, that we can learn to bat in the name of Jesus. Got my cousin read today. Bat on. Got Sister Watson up the road. Baton. Baton in Jesus' name. You know, oh dear, don't go off. Is he told them that this call? When, cuz, you all right? Why well, here? If, that's my cousin Rita. And Watson, darkest you get down today. I then see when you pass. I mean, you know how to get so. We always so busy. Girl, I was to call you, but I ain't get the chance. We got to change. We, oh dear dog, because you're talking now. But it is the truth. If these can call you and cheer you up, I'm a cousin Parson. Cuz, y'all right? Lady Dark, Sylvester always in there, you know? He like a shirt button, always in front. And I love him. <laughs> because he just pushed through every long silences. Dark, I hear you for a while. We, we got we to learn to love each other, we ladies. We can't be so busy at coming to an end. Hallelujah. We gather here today. We have great hope for what God will do in the future for us. His master plan is still being rolled out in this island and in this world. Special group of people that God has honored to see 100. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. I am persuaded nothing shall. I want us to do something together. I want you to put up Psalm 150 on the screen. I want all of us to engage in an act of praise to God. God told us for his great mercies to give him great praise. Now, I know we can keep a lot of noise. I know that. I want us to stand 
at this time. I want us to stand together, all who can. The words are on the screen. I want the drums to beat as much noise as you can. I want over by Shirley to hear, even over by Leela. Let them know that the robot saints give in praise to a mighty God. You hear me? I am going to leave. It's going to be from the King James Version. And we are going to praise the Lord because God said, for my great mercies to you all and to Sister Hall, give me great praise. Amen. Let us go. Praise ye the Lord. Wait, wait, wait. Nah, nah. Come on with voice. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the temporal and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him with the high sounding cymbals. the Lord. Hallelujah. Come back to 117. Come back to Psalm 117. And we're going to say that together. Something in my spirit saying. Somebody just whisper it. Just whisper it. But I want you to holler it out. Like Brother Blackett they're up here. Hallelujah. I want you to shout it out. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. All ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful loving kindness is great to us. And the truth of the Lord endure forever. Praise you. the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We are going to come down now. We used to sing every time we leave this house. Praise the Lord, the doxology. Praise ye the Lord, from whom all blessings come. Amen. Praise him, ye creatures, here below. Praise him of above, you heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
We are giving her a high score. Yeah. Let us give her a high score this morning. to my hall for a short time and we can all look at her and say through the sunshine and the rain yeah. you've made it through the sickness and the pain yeah. you could not have done it by yourself no. you have to ask our God for help yeah. so we can all shout hallelujah Amen. thank you Jesus you have made it and he or my is a very important part of this church here at Roebuck. And I had a conversation with her a while ago. And the history of the church here at Roebuck, according to Sylvia Hall, better known as Ma, will show how God directed persons to fulfill the vision of bringing people together to worship the true and living God. My whole remember that Mother Thorpe came to the area as an evangelist from the Esting Church in the parish of St. Michael. She started to keep open air meeting and did house to house visitation. A number of persons responded to the call of God and services were kept in one of the members' house. My whole grandmother. Imagine that. It was kept in my, my house. Mother Thorpe first went to Rock Hall, St. Andrew, where she said that God told her to start a church around 1934 to 35. And persons from Roba and Four Hill traveled to Rock Hall to be part of the congregation. Now, after a landslide in that area, it was a dispute when people who were not members of the church move into the church with their belongings, bed and stove and all, <laughs> because they were afraid. This greatly annoyed Mother Tharps, for she could not conduct any services there. You bed and stove and cooking? No. My whole added that Mother Tharps then moved to Roba and lived in a house on the, spot, on the spot below this church, right there. Oh, praise God. Then she moved with my whole family and kept church meeting where she lived. So therefore, technically, my hall was one of the first members in this church. Oh, give her a hand. Oh, glory to God. I believe that what God allowed her to live to a hundred, you know. All right, moving on. She was about 10 years old. Mother Thoris then moved to the residence of Pastor Sobers and conducted prayer meetings and church meeting. This meeting room soon became inadequate and attention was turned to acquiring a church. Therefore, she bought a house to be used as a church and placed on this part. Thanks to H.I. Gill from Indian Brown, who greatly assisted the purchase of the building. The spot that the church is on today was rented from the forehead plantation by my hall grandmother. And my whole grandmother allowed the church to be on the spot. Blessings falling on my again. Her name was Mrs. Marian Blackett, better known as I said my ma. The church was first called Four Hill New Testament Church of God because it was the land was rented from the Four Hill Plantation. Sometime after, it was then called the New Testament Church of God in Roba. On Sunday, the 13th of April, 1941, the church building was dedicated to be used to the honor and to the glory of God. Let's give my hall a hand for this history. <laughs> Praise God. 
at this time we're gonna have a song by the choir and right after the choir we're gonna have a poem by miss vicky morris and then a tribute by dr sylvester carrington choir i am happy every day as i travel through this land i've been mighty blessed by god and i'm holding to his hand my journey's almost over the battle's nearly won i have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come oh well, the, the best, best is yet, yet to come when i walk through the heaven's gate for the first time i see jesus i can hardly wait he'll show me to my mansion say child this is your home i have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come standing down on jordan's mind as i face life's chilly time the storms of life are raging but i'm happy down inside to take me safely home I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet to come oh the best is yet to come when I walk through the heaven's gate for the first time I see Jesus I can hardly wait he'll show me Standing down on Jordan's mind, life's chilly time. The storms of life are rich, but I'm happy down inside. I see the light for coming for to take me safely home. I have a feeling in my heart the best is yet. Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk through the heaven's gate. For the first time I see Jesus, I can hardly wait. He'll show me to my mansion, say, child, this is your home. I have a feeling in my heart. The best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk through the heaven's gate. For the first time I see Jesus, I can hardly wait. He'll show me to my mind and say, child, this is your home. I have a feeling in my heart. The best is yet to come. Oh, the best is yet to come. When I walk through the heaven's gates, for the first time I see Jesus, I can hardly wait. He'll show me to my mansion. Say, child, this is your home. I have a feeling in my heart. I have a feeling in my heart, the best is yet to come. I have a feeling in my heart, the best is yet to come. I have a feeling in my heart, the best is yet to come. This is a poem from Ma. It's called Wonderful Man by Sister Waveney. A woman so wonderful with sophisticated grace, with a great sense of humor and a beautiful face. A woman like wine, she gets better with age. 
whose love is genuine with the wisdom of a sage. We will tell you, Ma, we will tell you about Ma, she is special for days. Among all the grandmas, our Ma is the best. It is true because her love is overflowing and endless. She is the reason we all sit here today to love and laugh, worship and pray. But if it was not for God, we would not be here to celebrate your 100th birthday. For our beloved Ma on this special day, we want to wish you the best in every way. May your heart be filled with love and light and your days be nothing but pure delight. So here's to you, dear Ma, on your special day. May you be blessed in every way. May your heart be filled with love and peace and may your love continue to increase. God bless you, Ma. We love you. I have a request to make that at Ma's next birthday, do not ask me to speak after Dorcas. <laughs> That's a tough act to follow, Dark. Cousin Dorcas, Pastor Dorcas. And I promise you, I'm being honest, when I say that Dorcas and I did not put our heads together, if you listen to what I have to say, she's covered everything already in her speech. I think that was God working, wasn't it? God working. I want to remind Dorcas that this is my church too. Yes. <laughs> I've never been rebuked. <laughs> but, but this is my church. Grew up here, knowing all the hymns and the scripture verses and all the other things you've said in, in, in your address. Thank you so much. Ten years ago, I stood in this space, and I told you, I, st I still can't call her Sylvie, <laughs> Miss Morris, I told you how much I appreciated whenever you left home, when you passed by our house, you always called out, Ayola. That's all you said. When you come back from where you were going, Iola, that has never left me. Never left me in all these years. I was about maybe 10 years old when I started to recognize that. Now I'm a few years older. <laughs> a few years older. <laughs> that was about 65 years ago. You know, 65 years ago. Today, 10 years later, Ma is 100 years old. 100 years old and three days. And that's important because so many people would say, I wish I had three more days to do this or to do the other. And when I speak to her on some occasions, like you said, I always thank God for another day, another day. Not another year, but she counted by days, always, always. <laughs> You know, the Bible doesn't um, <coughs> make too much fuss about 100 years. It doesn't. It spoke about um, Adam, sorry, about Abraham being 100 years when Sarah got pregnant, uh, when the thing was born, but it said nothing else. It just went on. Methuselah was 969, and the Bible just said he was 969 until he died. But the Bible says a lot about being 70 years old. We are all promised 70, at least 70 years old. But then if you live to 80, the rest of it is strife and pain and sorrow. Mahal, you have passed through 70 with a breeze. <laughs> oh, yes. 80 with a breeze. 90 the same way. And now 100 years old and three days. To God be the glory, Amen. great things he's done. A hundred looks good on you. Amen. You wear it well. You do. 
You are still contented. You look happy. Look at your knees on there. You're contented. You are grateful. You look regal. And as you said, she looks pugnacious. Pugnacious. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to be always obsessed with the hundred. This is where we, we um, agree. Cricketers um, score a hundred. And they raise their bats in the air as a sign of, I've made it. I've made it. Mr. Hall, is, you can raise your hand in the air today. You, you've made it. You've made it. Not for the same reason as they did, as they have. But for a sense of gratitude. A sense of being grateful. And in thankfulness to God for what he's done. You know, I've gone through a number of schools. I never made a hundred on anything. I, I, you're right. <laughs> never made a hundred in math. Surely not a hundred in, I made a hundred in nothing. Is that, is <laughs> and you can tell, um, you know. But God has given you a hundred. You know why? God knows that you can manage being a hundred. Probably if I had gained a hundred in math, or I'd be all conceited and oh look at me, this is what I've done. Those who score, I never scored a hundred in cricket either, <laughs> because he knows I can I can handle it. <laughs> I'd be all excited. I'd be all um, you know, I look at what I've done, what I've done. Whenever I talk to you, I come away with excitement. <laughs> Because you are so positive. Never all about you. It's all about God. And what he's done. And I pray that we all here learn a lesson from Sister Hall. She gives the glory and the honor to where it is due. And, 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 that, and that to God. You know. I don't know why God allows some people to reach a hundred. I don't know. Why God allowed my son only to reach 40. When we go back next week, we're going to bury our son. <laughs> I'm not going to ask God why, because I may not be able to handle the answer. But I can tell you, he gave you a hundred for a purpose. Amen. There are so many lessons I've learned from you, and we have learned from you. Not just when you're 100, because all along the way, along the way. You know, I see people who made 100, and you ask them, what have you done to, to become 100? I walk every morning, I drink my water, I am a vegetarian, yeah. I'm a vegan. A lot of I, 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 I about you. Never, Sister Hall. Always, like you say. I am thankful for another day. Can we all learn something from that? Thankful for another day. <laughs> you know, I remember calling her one, son, one Sunday, and she sat me down on the phone. And first of all, I'm always amazed when I call her, she picks up my voice right away. Sil? Right away, because you're older, I said older, doesn't mean you are feeble or that you are. She's taught me that she has a purpose, no matter what age she is. She sat me down and taught me a history lesson about this place that you just read. How old Rita is, when Rita was born, how old Miss Watson is, when Miss <laughs> Watson was born. And I'm there sitting down, looking for my calculator. To, to, to <laughs> To add up all these, these figures, she had it right up here. And it flowed, it flowed, like she rehearsed it, like she rehearsed it. What a blessing it is to have a clear mind. Clear mind, even at 100. Now to the 103. 103. Three days. <laughs> Can't forget the three days. You know, God gave you 100, and all along those 100 years, you've been a mother. A mother to seven. 
Grandmother to 17. Oh, wow. Great grandmother to 18. And a great great grandmother to three. What a blessing it is. What a blessing it is to be that old and that young and that vivacious to have so many, so many grandchildren. Grandchildren. I know you, Sister Hall. I know you. And I know you know me. We go back a long way. Long way. Listen to this. Listen for the connection. I'm Sylvester Carrington. She is Sylvia. <laughs> I am Syl. She is Sylvie. No matter we have, we have that bond, we have always had that close relationship, that bond. Sylvester, Sylvie. Syl, Sylvia. Like I said, I know you. And I know you know me. I know how hard you worked on the Four Hill Plantation. I remember that. I remember you come home from work and you find me in your house, sitting down, not leaving till I get a share of food. <laughs> and you were always so gracious, <laughs> so kind. Give that boy something to eat. <laughs> Give the boy. Never a thought. That's how you were. I'll never forget that. Never, never forget. And I speak, you did the same thing at my house, so don't, don't think you're on, you know. <laughs> there he is, <laughs> you know. I also know that you had a hard time in life at some points. I know that. Folks have not been kind to you have not been gentle with you, have been unkind. Like I said, I'm trying to put it gently to you. But because of what you said, your persistence, your energy, your goal to be something better no matter what has brought you here today to be 103 years. And many folks have gone through what you've been through but their places are no more. But because of you and your faith in God, your trust in him, you're here today. I knew you, like I said, and you know me. I know you, when, I remember when you, I went to down to Sedgebourne. <laughs> <laughs> went to Sedgebourne one, one, one day, spent the whole day in Sedgebourne. Me and Tucky and uh, I speak and Michael and Livy, British Tech Bond. And the warning we got before we left do not spend the day, whole day down there. And we looked, oh boy, it was time to go home. Sun was setting, time to go home. We all grab a bunch of wood <laughs> to, you know, to appease our parents' anger. <laughs> Climbing Sech Bond Hill, Miss Morris, here comes Miss Morris. Never said a word. When I looked, I thought she was kissing Garrison. Seriously. I thought she was kissing him. I said, why is she, why is she kissing him? When I realized what was happening, she was biting Carson's ear. <laughs> bite, bite, biting his ear. He had hard ears, you know, hard ears. Yeah. Took the bunch of fish and threw them in the bush. The next morning, I went down the hill. I saw those pink shrimp in the, uh, in the bush, well cooked by the sun. <laughs> you, 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 you know. There are some things about her I never, I never, never forget. Like the story of the duck. <laughs> Somebody, uh, Jenny, is with you? With you? Cook Miss Morris duck. And served up for dinner soup or uh, duck soup or duck stew or whatever it was. This is what I remember about you and things that made me laugh. I can't forget. Somebody approached Miss Morris and said, Look, we cooked your duck. Cheryl, we cooked your duck. Miss <coughs> Morris says, I don't want no duck. I want my duck. <laughs> <laughs> that was classic, Sylvie. That was, uh, yeah, I'll never forget that. Classic, 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 Sylvie. You know, uh, the, all things 
work together for good. Like you said, for those that love. I said, we didn't, we didn't compare notes. We didn't compare notes. All things work together for good. I want you to know, Miss Morris, Miss Halls, that I stand on your shoulder. I do. You raise me up. I'm taller. Taller because of you. You raise us up. We stand on your shoulder because of you. I pray. That he'll continue to bless you. And all your life, your pursuits, as you continue to serve him and to love him, I'm sure he will keep you through. He has seen you for a hundred years and three days. And he's determined to see you through to the rest. Thank you. We love you. And God bless you. Good morning, church, or good afternoon. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Keith Gilmore Ace Moore Sylvia. That's my name. Anyway, the last time I stood here was about 65 years ago. I never thought that I would be here again. At that time, it was a Christmas program, and myself, Hugh Scan, no, sorry, Scanbury Hugh, um, Graham Scanbury, and myself, we did a, a program for Christmas, and we were so good at doing what we did at that time that they call us the three Hebrew boys. <laughs> but sudden, um, sadly, so the Hebrew boys passed away, and now you're left with one Israelite. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> Reverend Trenton Gittins, Reverend Waveney Silvers, pastors, ministers, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Today we join with the church to honor our mother on her 100th birthday. We honor for all that she has done for us. I cannot truly explain how important this day is for my brothers, my sisters, and I. The Bible reading today spoke about you, Ma, for you are a virtuous woman, not a vicious woman, a virtuous woman. We, you, children, rise up today and call you blessed, for you are blessed indeed. We thank God for his blessings on your life. Words may not have the power to describe how much we adore you, how much we appreciate you, and how much we thank you for everything that you have done for us throughout the years. Thank you for making sure that we had an education that we can navigate our way through life. We thank God for giving us a mom who were never afraid to discipline us. As one of my sisters said, we had love and licks, but we made it to strong adults to celebrate your 100th birthday with you. And another blessing is that you have four children over the ages of 70, and that is a great blessing. All of us will have our individual stories to tell about our inter action with you. However, however, we will all agree that we are truly blessed to have you in our lives. You have been there for us through our ups and downs and the thick and thin. We are forever thankful to have you as our mother. When we went astray, you were always there to welcome and comfort us. Ma, there are times when we were amazed by the qualities you possess. You are beautiful inside and outside, and is a very flashy dresser. <laughs> Your love for us knows no bounds. We see you as a strong woman. You are an incredible person, 
and a wonderful mother. One of the things I will always remember about you is your kindness. You have a great heart of gold and always willing to help others in need. You have a way of making people feel love and value, with the exception of me. That's a job, ma'am. Don't tell me serious. <laughs> Many people call you mom because of how you treat people. You treat people with love and respect that draws them close to you and make them feel as if you are their mom. We see you as a woman with a great sense of humor, so you can laugh now, mom. And we love to hear you laugh. You have a contagious laugh that could light up a room. Keep laughing. Just want you to know that you are simply the best mother in the whole wide world. Wishing you all of God's blessing on this day and always. And may the sun continue to shine upon you and bless you every day. We love you, Ma. Thank you. I've been battered, bruised, and torn, but I'm still here. Some days my life was filled with fear. Oh, but I'm still here. So many times I had to fight just to stay to stay in the right. I had failed so many, many, many times, but I'm still here. I had many disappointments, but I'm still here. There were days when I thought I could not make it, Lord, but I'm still here. So many storms I had to bear, Lord, for your joys, they can't compare. Storms of sickness, storms of strife, but I'm still here. I've been abused and misused, but I'm still here. Been persecuted and accused, oh, but I'm still here. Lord, it's such joy, such joy to know that your love has kept me so. Through the valley I had to go, but I'm still here. I'm still here to praise your name. Lord, I'm still here. You took the blame. Seems like my life was all so wrong. Lord, your love has kept me strong. I miss the gloom and despair. Lord, your love has kept me here. I cried and I cried. But I'm still here, Lord, I'm still here to praise your name. Lord, she's still here, you took the blame. Seems like her life was all so wrong. Lord, your love has kept her strong amidst the gloom. And despair, Lord, your love has kept her here. She cried 
she cries, but she's still here. Oh, yes, she cried, and she cried, she cried, and she cried, but your love surround her, your love embrace her, Lord, she's here. She's still here. And as we continue to celebrate the life of our dear sister and able to see and witness in person our sister celebrating her 100th birthday and her families, her loved one, showing that emotion and those who share tributes, taking us back down memory lane. And so it's a great occasion to be here to celebrate and give God thanks as we've been challenged from the word and the mind of God to give him thanks and praise for all his blessing and his goodness towards us. I just want to pray for this all as we want to bless those who want to take one. And as believers, the word of God said, any among the sick, let him call the, the elders of the church and knock them with oil and pray the prayer of faith. And God said he would forgive their sin and he would heal their disease. And we know throughout the scripture, all is new symbolic as the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as we unite our bodies as believers, we are declaring that by his stripes we are healed. We are declaring that God's a God of covenant. And we are his covenant people. And we are standing upon his word, as Peter declared. As the word of God says, speak the word. St. Therese says, speak the word and my servant shall be made whole. So we need to stand upon the word, for heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall remain. So it's for us to activate our faith in the power of the word of God. He has spoken it, we believe it. He watched of his word to perform it in the name of Jesus. Father, I lift this all before you this morning, and I pray God as those who knew this all, that you would honor your word in their life. As they call upon you through faith in the power of your word, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the power of the blood, we pray, God, that they will faith be activated, God. And God, you will honor their faith, God, and respond to their prayer and their cry as they look towards you. I pray right now as we are in this atmosphere where your Holy Spirit is present in a special way, God, I pray, God, that you will touch us all by your power and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and cause us all to be anointed, God, to be news for praying for the sick, God, and believing you for miracles to take place in our life as we news them for your honor your glory. So bless us all, I pray thee. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I ask. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. I give thanks to each and every one of you for coming here to help me celebrate the Sunday day. I never thought I would have reached 50 and still have 100. <laughs> but I can sell out the song, um, the song right there. Too many days of his toil and sneers, I have already come. It is grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. I give God thanks for everything. I haven't went through a little bit, I went through a lot. But God has brought me out. The song has said, God has brought me out all right. You know, I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. So he brought me out all right. I give thanks to everybody that here that come to help me celebrate my 100th birthday. I give thanks to all the children, 
one so wonderful children and so wonderful grandchildren. That have, they have not leave me out one day. And I give thanks, especially to Marveline. Marveline, I give thanks. I don't know how she bear with me, but she bear. <laughs> and I give thanks to her. She see me, she don't let me laugh. She, look, I don't know how to describe her. So I tell her, Marveline, try to sit down. She can't sit down. I don't know why. So I tell her, actually, you mother, they long for me. You can't sit down, you know? And I give God thanks for all of them. That I thought this year, this month, is a year that I was grieving, but now I'm giving thanks. Amen. You know? I miss him. The Lord know how much I miss him. You know? Because he was a wonderful man. And I miss him. But yeah, life has to go on. Life has to go on. He gone, but God is still here. Amen. So I give thanks to each and every one of you. I thank you all for coming to help me celebrate this day. You know, because I didn't know I would reach this far, but to God be the glory. Amen. Great things he have done. You know, I tell the psalmist David, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits and his goodness towards me. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord because he has been good to me. Like the song says, he has been good. He was being so good. I didn't very good, but he was very good, good to me. You know? Uh, he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to make me good, to make me what I am today. I was in trouble of his uh, Thank the first child of his mercy and I redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So I give God the glory. I thank God for my six children. I had seven, but one passed away. I think I have about 16 grand, so 16 great grand, and about 14 grand. But I thank God for all of them. <laughs> However much they are, I thank God for them because I live to see up to my fourth generation. So to God be the glory. Amen. So I give God thanks and I pray that you all will continue to pray for Sister Hall because she's determined to hold out to the end. Amen. So I give God the glory and the praise. So you all to come there to pray for me. I ask you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today I'd like to wish my uh, happy hundreds for again. Thank God for her. Uh, I'd like to thank God for allowing her to see 100 years so we can celebrate with her. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank the Reverend Trenton Gittings, the pastor, for allowing us to take over his mode of service today to celebrate Ma. Um, next, Reverend Wade Mitobe. I can't say enough about Wadeney. Every time there's a birthday for Ma and I call Wadeney and say, you know, we would like to celebrate, she always says, remember, church service first. Right? We have to put God first. So I thank her for going above and beyond to make this service possible. Uh, next, I'd like to thank Sister Wanita for decorating the church. Beautifully done. We appreciate it. And Andres Keat for the PowerPoint program and other ways that he greatly assisted. The family members, we have a wonderful family. I thank God for you. Um, I'd like to say a special thanks to the ones that came from England, from the United States, 
that are not even blood relatives to Mama. They are related on my dad's side, but because of her love and her motherly attention when they were growing up, they still refer to her as Ma, and she's very important in their lives. Uh, Sylvester, Dr. Sylvester Carrington and his wife Hortense, and their son Honey, my heart goes out to you. I ask God for special blessings on you, and I give you an extra thanks that you could put aside all your grief and differences to be here for Ma. It shows how special she is to you that you could do that. Um, the preacher. The preacher. <laughs> I cannot say enough. Remember when Waveney called me and told me they were going to have a service? Um, we, we, we appreciate the new pastor, but, you know, we were not familiar with you yet. But we grew up with Dorcas. She's one of us, so I asked her, would Dorcas be available? She said, uh, let me call her. I'm sure she would. Thank you. You delivered as good this year as you did <laughs> when she was 90. So on her next birthday, we'll request you again. Or uh, her 110th, I should say. We'll request you again. Uh, the worship team, I'd like to say a Special thanks. You did a wonderful job. You had people here dancing and rocking with bad knees and my swollen foot. I was still able to shake it. Thanks. And all the persons involved in making this day a remarkable one. Thank you. May God bless you. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Pray that God will continue to bless the January borns. The others will come when their time comes. <laughs> we give God thanks for all that he has done. And I thank God again for the smiling faces, a smile to send a message. Let's bow our heads. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide and dwell with us all now and forever as we all say, Amen. Amen.